All right, so by this time, I hope you guys went over the first notes, the introduction to ordinary differential equations. Um, and as you remember from the notes, the definition of what constitutes a differential equation is quite large or quite broad. Um, it's really any, any equation, any mathematical equation that contains um, an unknown function. and its derivatives, one or more of its derivatives. If it doesn't contain any derivative, of course, it's an algebra equation. It's an algebraic equation, so it's not, it's not a differential equation, so to speak. Um, so the most important thing is to uh, understand this convention of notation that I actually talked about in the notes. Um, let's say the uh, differential equation tries to solve for a function y of t, and remember y of t is always, uh, I mean, the, the variable t is because typically denotes the time. Um, the um, most of the uh, real life applications that involve differential equations are time dependent, so t typically denotes the time variable. So let's say you try to find a um, uh, function of t that is subject to the following equation. <coughs> so let's find an example here. Uh, let's say um, y double prime of t times y of t um, to the power three plus 5 y of t times y of t to the power 4, um, well, let's put the prime here, y of t to the power 4 equals, I don't know, let's say, sine of y of t. I should emphasize that we're not going to be able to solve this type of equation. Most of the differential equations cannot actually be solved explicitly. But I want to illustrate why it's important to have that convention of notation that I talked about in the notes, namely that not mentioning of t all the time because you're going to get sick of so many uh, parentheses as you will see here. So instead, we assume that y, y prime, y double prime really refer to y of t, y prime of t, y double prime of t. And with that being said, um, this, this example can be written in a much more compact form as y double prime, y third plus five, y prime, y to the 4, equals sine of y. So whenever you see y, just assume that actually it stands for y of t. So y stands for y of t. And <coughs> obviously, make sure you also understand that all the derivatives that appear in the differential equation are with respect to t. So y, if, you, if you have to differentiate t by itself, of course, you know t prime is equal to 1. But remember, y prime is not going to be equal to 1, right? y prime is nothing but a shortcut for y prime of t. So keep in mind this convention of notation. From now on, we're going to just use either the prime notation for the derivative uh, or dy dt, which is, which is much clearer that you know, it, it stands for um, the derivative of y with respect to t. Um, another important consideration is to um, Um, yeah, I mean, another important observation I want to make is also related to the naming of these variables uh, or functions because, because of this convention of notation, uh, y actually is written as a variable rather than as a function, although it's really a function. Um, as I mentioned also in the notes, y is called the dependent variable. Um, and t is the independent variable. So they are written as variables, I mean they are called variables because they look like variables, although y is a function of t. <coughs> um, so there are also various types of ODEs that I discussed in the, in the notes, so I'm going to write down a couple of more examples. Um, the order of an ODE refers to the highest order of the derivative, so the first order ODE means uh, an ODE that contains just the first variable, uh, the first derivative, I'm sorry. So just y prime, not the higher order. Um, another important type that we're going to study later, the second order ODE, um, obviously is an ODE that depends on the second derivative as well. So you can have y double prime plus 5 y prime plus 7 y equals 0. That's actually a type of ODE which we will study in more details later. Um, 
it does y prime doesn't have to be here right but if it's a for second order y double prime needs to be in the in the equation so here's another example of a second order let's say um y double prime times t you can have some coefficients like that plus 5y equals t squared um, so you could have extra terms that depend on t or not right like in in this example you see there is no t apparently in the equation but of course everything depends on t because as we mentioned before y y double prime and so on are really functions of t um, so in the next uh, video of this introductory lecture we're gonna go over some examples um, of um, differential equations that come from real life applications so you have a description of a time dependent phenomena um, and the goal is to basically write a differential equation that describes the situation um, often in real life of course in addition to the differential equation you also have initial conditions so I mean if you model a quantity whatever that quantity means it's got to start from somewhere so for example let's say this denotes um, a population let's say that that grows um, in time um, well to actually really solve it explicitly you need to find an initial I mean you need to start with an initial population size and that pinpoints to an exact solution of the, of the differential equation we're gonna deal with uh, about you know we're gonna talk about this these aspects in more details as as we move on with the material but let's focus for now to just write a couple of differential equations just based on uh, a physical description of the problem.